So complex. Oh, wow. Let me, Sorry, uh, I'm short. No, that's all right. Let, uh, we want Shane in the background or no? You think that's yeah, better? Yeah, I think we want yeah. Shane in the background. Well, then here, you stand over here. Okay, we got uh, Allie Russell, fire away. Allie, what's kind of your initial reaction of getting the seven seed and where you guys are in the bracket? Excitement. I know we were all kind of unsure as to how it was going to go, but we were hoping for a bye first round, and so that is that was great news. We were all really excited. How different is it going to be? I mean, when you look at the, the tournament, it's all going to be in North Carolina. It's all going to be on a neutral right. site. I mean, does that affect things in, in your mind, do you think? Um, I think that it has its perks. Obviously, it's different. Normally, I mean, we're traveling. A lot of times we're at home at the beginning, which is nice. But I think this is a cool opportunity for our team to remain um, all together. And I think it all in all will be a great bonding experience. And it's also going to keep us safe and healthy, which I think is very important especially right now. So it will be different, but I also think it will be exciting too. Allie, how much can you guys draw on past tournament experience to help you guys get ready for this, even though it's such a different tournament than it has been in the past? Yeah, well, you know that a &M is one who has been in the tournament for years on end now. So we use a lot of that past experience to um, help us just going into this year. Of course, like you were saying, it's going to be different, but there's also going to be similarities. Um, and last last tournament, which was in, holy cow, 2019, 2019. Yeah, that which is insane. Um, that I think we learned a lot from that going home early really stunk and no one wants to feel that again. And so though we have new players, we all know, everyone knows what that feeling is like and no one wants to feel that again. So I think all in all, like we learned a lot from that tournament and I know people older than myself have learned from before. So we're all gonna take that into this tournament. Before the TCU game, I forget who we spoke with, but one of your team said, you guys thought you were playing for your life in the NCAA tournament. If you guys weren't able to beat TCU, there was a shot that y'all wouldn't have got one of the at-large bids. So the confidence you guys had beating TCU, how does that translate into you guys trying to keep this momentum moving throughout the tournament? Yeah, well, we finished regular season with a big win. And so with that, that just gives us a lot of momentum going into the tournament and a lot of confidence, I feel like, as well. And so that that was not only a big win for our place in the tournament, but a big win for our confidence and how we're feeling going into it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much. Apologize. This has already been asked. Uh, my audio messed up. But um, what is the uh, the feeling like knowing that you're going to kind of be in a bubble and be away? And if if your dreams and and aspirations come true, you're you're, you're going to be away for a long time. Yeah, I. It's definitely weird. Thinking about it is kind of weird, but also considering the circumstances, it's just something that we we have been mentally preparing for. And I also we're going to be. We're at the end of our school year. We have a lot of school. And so it's actually kind of a blessing because all of us will be so focused in um, and able to have this bubble where we're focused on school, we're focused on soccer um, and we're just doing everything to get the job done. And so, yes, it's weird. Um, but I also think we're, we're looking at it more in a positive way, um, trying to find the benefits of the bubble. Thanks. Of course. All righty, thanks and giggle. Of course, thanks guys, giggle. And then I think Coach G jumped on here, yes. so. Oh, not Howdy, everybody. Hey, Coach. Uh, just to get started off, um, what, what? How do you feel about the the, the seating and the layout of your your quadrant, and and uh, how everything shook out for y'all um, from the selection show? Well. Uh, I, number one, obviously, we're elated to be in the tournament. I mean, to be in 26 years in a row is, uh, is, is I think, <laughs> points a little bit to the consistent high level that this program has has been flying at since 1995. Uh, you know, it reminds me quite a bit of all the different young women who have represented Texas A&M in those years and who have, have put A&M on this uh, on this platform. And uh, but especially more than anything, really excited for for these young women and 
having gone through an extraordinarily difficult year um, and having to stay so focused and so disciplined and so true to each other, um, you know, this is a, a great payoff for them to be the number seven seed is, uh, is terrific. Um, you know, there's no easy, there's no easy path. You're going to always come up against teams that are, are great teams. And that'll be the case for us. You know, the team that we're going to play in the second round is going to be undefeated um, on the season when we, when we see them. So there will be no shortage of confidence in them. They will have played one game um, at the venue that we're going to play at, which will be a bit of an advantage for them. We'll be, we'll be a little bit fresher than they are, which will be a little bit of an advantage for us. And, uh, you know, right now we're just hoping for good weather and, and uh, no, no drama between now and, and uh, April 30th when we play that game. Um, do you, uh, have you reach out at all to coach Blair and his staff to kind of get some tips and tricks for this kind of bubble life and, and, and maybe a, a elongated business trip? I was talking to uh, Gary last night, as a matter of fact, um, just trying to, you know, find out. I, I think that, I think women's basketball was one of the stricter uh, bubbles that they've had. Uh, my understanding is wrestling has been a little bit different. Volleyball currently is a, just a little bit different. So there's going to be some nuance to what we do, um, you know, and it, it, most of it's just going to be, we have to prepare for the best. We've got a, we've got a team that has, uh, has really done a great job of having themselves prepared for whatever we threw in front of them or now whatever the NCAA lays out in front of them. So, um, you know, it's just going to be a matter of that, of, you know, will we be allowed to leave our hotel? Uh, will we, we Will we be able to? I think our travel party is 33, if I if I if I just saw it correctly. So, um, you know, how are we going to lay that out? How do we get to where we're going to go? All all those things are still to be determined. You know, we've got the best director of ops in the in the business with Kurt Magnuson, and I know that he'll uh, he and our administration will have us ready to roll. And then finally, I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but um, any any eye rolls at at having North Carolina in the same bracket as kind of the the hometown program? Well, we're going to be in Greensboro, so it's not necessarily hometown for them. You know, I can remember them losing uh, to Florida there in uh, in 98 for the national championship. So we'll, we'll take that as a lucky charm for us. You know, we've had some, if we get that far, um, you know, our path is play undefeated teams first, then you've got to play the side of where Oklahoma State is and we've had some epic battles with them and then uh, that's that is perhaps a um, an elite eight uh, battle with Carolina and we've had a couple elite eight battles with them in Chapel Hill over the years that have been just you know knocked down drag outs that went to the last to the last moment so for us um, I, I know it's cliche but we, we, we can only focus on us for the next couple of weeks to get ourselves ready, to look at ourselves, to find the things that we've got to do to be the very best that we could be, because we're going to have to be our best if we're going to survive this this uh, this trip to North Carolina. Thanks, Coach. Congrats. Sure. Coach, as far as these games go, you talked about a little bit, but how different is it, you know, playing on the neutral site this whole time, and, and does that make the preparation, I guess, mentally any different? Well, the if, if we're going to be playing at uh, – uh, UNCG's stadium. It's a great stadium. They've hosted college cups, just like Ellis Field has hosted college cups in the past. We've played there in the past. Um, you know, the last game we played there was against a really good NC State team. Um, that was like, it was a 3-3 draw. I think it was, it was a crazy game. So um, it's a Bermuda surface, which is good for us. It's, uh, it's in a climate. North Carolina has similar climate to, uh, to Texas. So um, I don't think there's going to be that many, um, you know, fish out of water type of situations for us. I think that it's it really it'll it should make it to where you know we can if we uh, if we keep our focus. You know, the, it gives us a good fair a good fair playing field to be on. Obviously, we'd love to be playing here at Ellis Field where we know every every bounce and slippy slippery slope. But it's going to be um, at least it'll be a fair situation out there. And coming off that, that big win over number three TCU, is that the kind of momentum that you feel like this team needs heading into this tournament? Is that going to play to your advantage? Absolutely. I think that that, that win was one of the reasons why we are the number seven seed. Um, I think we proved, we proved 
um, our worth. Uh, we proved our level. Um, and, uh, you know, now we've got to go out and just keep proving it because now we're, we're not trying to be number seven, we're trying to be number one. And, uh, you know, we've got a, a really tough road to go. Um, we'll see. But the cool thing is now we get to keep our season going. This, like I said, this has been, you guys know, I mean, 2020, 2021 has been just a crazy, ridiculous, um, never knowing what's around the next corner. At least we have a, a little bit of a glimpse of what's what's going to happen around that around that corner. Um, and we get a chance to prepare right here at home. And the girls have a chance to kind of focus on their grades here at home before we take off. And we, you know, we have a free, a free win in the first round. And this is, I think, Thomas will have to have to um, correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I believe this is 22 years in a row that we've made it at least to the second round, which I think it's just us in North Carolina that are the only teams that have done that. So that's a pretty cool, uh, that's a pretty cool streak to keep going as well. Awesome. Thank you, coach. Coach, I got two for you. Uh, Allie mentioned it, but you know, you guys have made the tournament 26 straight years. This is obviously a different tournament. So how much can you look upon the past and some of those previous tournament experiences to help you guys this time around in a unique situation? Well, we'll have to be prepared. Um, you know, penalty kicks are something that could occur. Uh, you know, the last we played last time we went into penalty kicks, uh, we unfortunately lost and the team that we lost to went on and won the national championship in Southern Cal um, a few years ago. So that'll clearly be something that we are prepared for. Um, you know, we'll have to, well, we can always look back at our experience. And I think, I think the experience that we have gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of, a, a big, a bit of a leg up on, on our competition. And, and the, the key thing is it's, you know, we've been in this so many times, but you know, my staff has been with me for, for 21 years. So that consistency, we learn, we don't, you know, we don't have to reshuffle our deck as far as the way our leadership goes every year, we get a chance to build on these things. And even though, um, for a lot of our players, for all of our freshmen, this will be their first NCAA tournament. They're uh, they're going knowing that the people around them are are well versed in in the situation and how things are going to go. And I don't know if frustration is the right word to use here, but is it a little frustrating or disappointing that you guys are going to compete for a championship and it's not the full team you've had all year, considering some of the girls who left to go play professionally after the fall semester? Hey, we're, we're thankful. We, we are thankful that we're getting this opportunity. And again, I think that the fact that, you know, the SEC midfielder of the year is now playing professionally for Kansas City and the SEC co-defender of the year um, is now playing uh, in Spain is was something that probably people were looking at and using against us. Um, but I think that last week, uh, our, our ladies proved that we are every bit the team that can beat anybody um, on any given day. And uh, we'll be looking for that type of performance again as we as we go into uh, Greensboro. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Any, anybody Hi, else? Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, yes. Hi, Jennifer Streeter with Tech Sags. Congratulations, Coach G. And then I was kind of just hoping you could touch on how proud you are of this team with all of the work y'all have done in the fall and in the spring, kind of how does it feel for you to see it all pay off after this selection show? Well, I'm, I'm obviously very proud of, of our, of our women. I think that they've proven to be, um, to put other people before themselves sometimes. I mean, you look at just the, the life that you can have as a college student at Texas A&M can be, a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, it, it's filled with pressure because it's a it's a damn hard school to uh, to get good grades in. Um, but then you you throw on top of that the fact that we've had to be kind of in a bubble for eight months, and the the situations of starting stopping. You know, we've had we've had a couple false positives that have put people in COVID jail for for a week, and you know, then getting them out and the elation of what happens with that. We've had some great performances by our, our players throughout the year, but all of those things were always kind of with a shadow of you, you never knew if, the, if somebody was going to tap you on the shoulder and say that the season's canceled. So um, I, I, I can't, I can't put into words how pleased I am for, for these women. They have, they have really shown to be true to each other. 
you know, when we have a saying that we use that, you know, taking care of yourself is taking care of the team and uh, taking care of, of yourself oftentimes being taking care of your, your roommate or your teammates and making sure that everyone else is, is, is doing the right things. And, and they've done a great job of, of that. And, you know, we're, we're going to go into, into this tournament with a, with a, a lineup that's about 19 years, you know, average of 19 years old. Um, but they are far beyond that in their, uh, their experience that they've gained this year. Thank you so much, Coach G. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. I got one last question for you, Coach. First of all, okay. congratulations on the seating. That's awesome. Uh, one thing we've been following this semester and this season especially uh, was following those graduation of the older players. Y'all have had an extremely young lineup. I think the Rice game was like eight of 11 starters were underclassmen. Uh, so considering this is y'all's first tournament appearance since 2019, just because 2020 obviously didn't happen, uh, what is that age really mean for the team, the fact that y'all are just so young? I know you've sort of touched on it, but if you could go a little bit deeper, that'd be great. Well, I think number one, it, uh, you know, and again, we, we started five freshmen and three sophomores against TCU um, back on the 10th. So it, uh, I think it shows number one, the talent level of, of players who come into this program that we, we recruit kids that are ready to play. And the, uh, the, the, way, the, the way that this year worked out by playing one game a, a week instead of playing two games a week and be more of a grind, we were able to really focus a lot on uh, individual development and improvement. You know, uh, Phil Stevenson, who's our associate head coach, does, does an extraordinary job in helping these players to learn about themselves and to get better at the things that they do and, and helping them to realize that they can, that every day is a new opportunity to get a little bit better. And it's one thing to say that, it's another thing for our players to actually learn it. And, you know, the, the payoff for this, obviously we want this payoff to be by winning and winning and winning and winning um, and getting ourselves back into the college cup. But, uh, you know, we're gonna be pretty good next year. You know, we've got, you know, I've got three players that are here right now that were not allowed to use by the NCAA for whatever reason, um, who graduated high school early and who've been training with us every day. Those three are phenomenal players. They would be in our lineup right now if uh, if they were allowed to be. So that's that's kind of the frustrating part that I've got is that I can't use those guys. But I do know in the back of my mind that I've got those guys in our lineup uh, in August once we get rolling and that they are also gaining from this experience that their their teammates are, have, have provided for them. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck in North Carolina. Sure, thank you. All righty, thanks and gig them. All right, thanks guys. Have a good one.